Welcome back everybody to Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson and once again I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about gemstones. Today what we're going to be talking about is arguably my favorite thing in gemstones and that is the star. The technical name for it is called asterism. If you think about it, astral projection, asteroid, these are all things to do with stars. It's just a Latin root. So asterism is the star effect in gemstones. How are stars made in gemstones? Well, that depends on the gemstone, but most of them are caused by the same thing. When the stone is forming in the earth, different substances are going to crystallize at different temperatures. Just like different substances will melt at different temperatures and separate out in layers, when they're crystallizing, they'll also crystallize and harden at different temperatures as well. So what happens is in a stone like sapphire, for example, that's famous for a star, What's happening is when the corundum, that sapphire material, is hardening and crystallizing, other materials like titanium oxide, so that's a mineral called rutile, will actually get squeezed out of the crystal structure. Originally, it was just kind of mixed together in that hot mess underneath the earth, but as it starts to crystallize, it squeezes out the rutile, that titanium oxide, and it becomes what we call a needle. This is a type of inclusion. This is one of those situations where inclusions are incredible and can add a lot of value to the stone. So titanium oxide or rutile is actually really reflective. And so what happens is when light goes into that sapphire, if there's enough of these needles inside of the stone and the stone is cut in a cabochon shape, the cabochon will act like a lens. And so the light that hits these needles that are organized in specific patterns following the crystal structure of the sapphire, it will project a star up onto the face of the stone. And that's what creates our star. Many other gem substances can also have stars, but they'll have different angles. And why is that? Because different crystals have different crystal structures. They're going to have different axes of symmetry and things like that. And so the minerals that are squeezed out of their crystal structure as the stone is crystallizing are going to be at different angles. So something like star diopside only has a four-ray star. Garnets can also have stars. There's many other stars out there, and it really just depends on what is the crystal material that the star is forming in, and what is the mineral that causes the star. So in sapphires, most typically, because it has a hexagonal shape crystal structure, it's going to have a star with six rays. So that's gonna be three lines that intersect. And that's because the needles are in a pattern that intersect like this at 120 degrees, which is the same angle that defines a hexagon. It's also possible to have a star with more than six rays, and that would be because there are two different sets of needles. In black star sapphires, it's really uncommon, but it can happen to have something like, I believe it's a 12 ray star. And I've been told that's because it has rutile needles that we just talked about, and it also has hematite needles. And to my understanding, in order for that to happen, then those needles are gonna to have to crystallize going in different orientations in order for you to see a 12 ray star. It's magic. So as a quick recap, the number of rays that are gonna be in a star is dependent on the material, the gem material that the star is growing in, and then what mineral is forming to create and focus that star. Any star stone is going to need to be cut in a cabochon, that mounded shape, in order to act as a lens and focus that star so that we can see it. Now I want you to be aware that there are synthetic stars out there in the world. Synthetic sapphire material is one of the earliest synthetic materials made by man. But in order to get a star, it takes a two-step process. It's not like it just comes out of the laboratory with a star on it. Well, I mean, it does come out of the laboratory, but after the second step. So they take that star material, they cut it into the cabochon shape, and then what they do is they basically cook it in an oven with titanium. And of course, this is at ridiculously high temperatures. The titanium then gets inside of the top surface of that cabochon and crystallizes into tiny, tiny needles. And that titanium oxide is the same thing that forms in the earth, except this is done in a laboratory condition. So these tiny, tiny needles are what focus a star, and typically synthetic stars are incredibly sharp. But there's one awesome thing that will help us a lot in determining the difference between a natural origin star and a synthetic origin star. If you look at a natural origin star under a loop and you move it around, you should be able to find a certain direction where you can find some kind of needles that are visible to you. And most of the time, these needles will have some kind of an iridescent reflection. You may not see all of the needles, don't worry about that, but if you see a few needles that have an iridescent reflection, you can be confident that this is a natural star. Synthetic origin stars you won't be able to see with a loop or even a microscope most of the time. So as far as treatments go, star sapphires are very easy to trade in because most of the treatments are verifiable with your eye and you don't need a major lab. 
If you were to heat treat the stone to a higher temperature, typically the temperature that they would use in order to change the color of the star sapphire, then most of the time that will dissolve the rutile needles and it will destroy the star. So the vast majority of star sapphires are untreated. I will say, however, that I have seen a star sapphire that was treated. The star itself was a natural origin. I could see with a loop that there was an iridescent reflection on the needles. But when you look closer at the stone, you could see that it's glass filled. It has what's called a flash effect. Glass filling happens at such a low temperature, it doesn't affect the rutile needles. So there are still treatments out there and you have to be careful. If you're not confident in your skills and you haven't seen enough of these stones, then definitely do check with a lab, just like the one that we talked about in a previous episode. Whichever lab you prefer is fine by me, just make sure that they have integrity and a good reputation. When you're looking at star sapphires to decide if you want to buy it or not, keep in mind that most of the markets, they have very strong lights on their booths or in their shops. When you're considering to buy a star sapphire, make sure that you get a chance to look at it in natural light. Hopefully the office either has a window or somebody can go with you outside so that you can see it in the full day sun. A quality star sapphire should have rays that go from edge to edge of the cabochon. Those lines should be straight and it should be visible and sharp enough in natural daylight conditions. That means the sun. If you're holding a torch on it and you see a strong star, that's obvious. Most stones can show a star in that kind of condition. But if you're out in the sun, that's where you really want to test the stone. At the end of the day, natural beauty is what we're looking for in a stone. So let's do a quick recap here. Today we've been talking about the star effect known as asterism. Asterism, where the star effect can happen in many different types of stones. How many rays there are in the stone depends on what material the star is growing in and what minerals are being squeezed out into needle inclusions in the crystal structure. The angles that those rays intersect at can tell us about what type of stone this is because different crystal structures are going to have different angles. The vast majority of star stones are untreated, but there are certain treatments, so it's always good to get a second opinion. When checking if a star stone is synthetic or natural origin, if you see needles with your loop and you see an iridescent reflection on those needles, then that's a very good sign that this is a stone with a natural star origin. Treated or synthetic origin stars, you won't see those needles or they'll have been diffused, which means they get kind of lumpy. They melted in the heat. I absolutely love star stones, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, and tell all of your friends about it, and I will see you next week for more. Bye-bye.